Welcome ChemCom. Up until this point, we've learned how to write the formulas of ionic compounds. Today we're going to talk about something that is essential to name ionic compounds correctly, which is oxidation numbers. Let's get started. An oxidation number is the charge within a compound of a specific atom. It's really a measure of after electrons are transferred to an atom or away from an atom, what's that atom's perceived charge? Some of these you already know based on their position on the periodic table, which is what this picture shows at the bottom of the slide. But there are more rules to oxidation numbers because there can be certain elements within a formula that are hard to identify if they've lost electrons or gained electrons. So here are some oxidation number rules. First, any element that's in its pure state or elemental state would have an oxidation number of zero. So diatomics, any noble gas, they all have the oxidation number of zero. Monatomic ions are ions that we make from the periodic table elements would just have the charge based on the column they're in. This next part is where the rules get a little different depending on what the element is doing. For instance, oxygen is typically a negative 2, but when it's in a peroxide, the peroxide's total charge is negative 2, which means each of those oxygens has to be minus 1. Hydrogen is typically a plus 1, but there are certain times when hydrogen actually will gain electrons and it will act as an anion. In those cases, hydrogen's charge is a minus 1. We call these metal hydrides. You can see some examples here and you can see that the hydrogen is in the anion position. Fluorine is a negative one in all compounds. Other halogens will most likely be negative, but if they're combined with oxygen, let's say in a polyatomic, they would have a positive charge. Two more rules here. The sum of the oxidation numbers within the compound should equal zero, and the sum of the oxidation numbers within a polyatomic should equal the charge of that ion. So the idea is we can use those rules to determine the charge of any element within a compound. This really just comes down to some basic algebra. So let's look at copper nitrate here. We have one copper and it is underlined, which means that's the charge they want us to identify. So we're gonna make copper X. Then we have two nitrates. So each nitrate is a minus one, and we have two of them, so two times minus one. And we know that the overall charge needs to equal zero. You can quickly solve for x and see that it is two. So that tells us that copper will have a perceived charge or an oxidation number of plus two. So remember from your polyatomic ion list that copper can have multiple charges. So if we want to know if this is copper 1 nitrite or copper 2 nitrite, we could do this basic algebra and figure it out. Let's try another one. If we look at tin here, tin is underlined, so we're going to make it X. And then we have sulfate. Sulfate is a negative 2 charge. And we have two sulfates. And that equals 0. We can see the solution to this problem is 4. And therefore, this is 10 with a plus 4 charge. If we look at the last one here with lead, we have lead, which we don't know, plus 2 nitrates again, which means this is going to be lead 2. Let's try some more examples that don't necessarily use the cation as the unknown. If we look at this one here, we can see that we have 2 sodium. Sodium is a plus 1 charge because it's in the first column. We have a sulfur, which we don't know the charge of. And then we have three oxygen. Each oxygen is worth negative two, and we can set that equal to zero. So now we just solve for x. So we got two plus x plus negative six equals zero. And then x plus negative four equals zero. So x is going to equal four. So x is going to equal four. Therefore, the oxidation number of sulfur is a plus 4 charge. Let's try this next one. We have manganese, which we don't know the charge of. And we have 4 oxygen, which are each negative 2. But notice something here. This is a polyatomic. This is not a neutral substance. It has a charge. It has a negative 1 charge. So that means we should set this equality equal to negative one, because that's the overall charge of this ion. 
So now if we do the math, we get x plus negative 8 equals negative 1. We'd add 8 to both sides, and we'd see that x equals 7. So the perceived charge of this manganese atom is a plus 7. So next one is dichromate, and we, it wants to know about chromium, and there are two chromiums. So we're going to do 2 times x plus 7 oxygen. Each oxygen is a negative 2. And this one has an overall charge of negative 2. So 2x equal, so 2x plus negative 14 equals negative 2. So we'd add 14 to both sides and we get 12. We divide by 2 and we'd see that x equals 6. So each of these chromiums is a plus 6 charge. This next one's a little tricky. We have calcium, which is a plus 2. We have two nitrogen, so two X, and then we have four oxygen because two times two is four oxygen. This one is neutral, so we're gonna set it equal to zero. So we get two X plus negative six equals zero. Then we get two X equals six, divide by two, and X would equal three. At this point, I'm going to stop working through examples, but you can see how to work through these mathematically. You just need to remember it's basic algebra. As long as you're doing atom counts correctly and identifying the charges of the things you know correctly, you should be okay. Keep practicing, let me know if you have questions, and we will see you next time. Good job.